Welcome to another program in our series, Free Thinking Forum. I'm Bill Weir, the producer and host, and I'm delighted to welcome the executive director of producer of the Uptake news gathering website and producer of the documentary film, How Love Won, The Fight for Marriage Equality in Minnesota. Mike McEntee. Yes, Bill, glad to, have you, glad to be here. Thank you and, so much for inviting me, Ed. Uh, people uh, who haven't seen it yet probably want to know what's, the, what's it all about. What is this documentary? Well, the title sort of says it. It's about the battle that was happening over marriage equality here in Minnesota a few years ago. But it's also really about how you deal with political questions and discussions that are kind of uncomfortable, which is really a topic people are interested in these days. Yes. And maybe to give people a, a, a better idea of what that is really about, we can take a look at a, a, a little trailer that kind of previews what the movie is. Well, let's see it. And we're announcing today the introduction of a constitutional amendment to define marriage. Uh, the proposed constitutional amendment will ask voters to define marriage solely between one man and one woman in the state of Minnesota. I was uh, personally insulted by the idea that this amendment might be even presented as a bill. There being 38 ayes and 27 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. You know, I sit in the Senate and you see on the, on the walls equality, justice, freedom. Those are the words that, are, that Republicans supposedly believe in. We were being looked at as a, as a group of people who are not worthy of, of the same things that everyone else is. It was a, a dark day that that happened. Um, of course, it turns out that they were doing us a great favor. Are we afraid to let Minnesotans discuss this and vote? How in the world are we gonna be a state that can beat something like this? No one has ever beat one of these, and so we have to figure out how, how are, what are we gonna do that's gonna make the difference? I think we had like a million conversations. <laughs> that was the goal. Part of it was the arc of history was on our side. The room erupted. There was this mixed feeling that night, like, oh my God, we did it. We're not really done. <laughs> you know, we're not done yet. That's great. Mike, why did you make this documentary? Uh, that's a really good question because I wasn't intending to make a documentary. Uh, the Uptake, which is the organization I work for, covers political news in Minnesota. And this was a political story we were following here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it was one of a bunch of stories that we were following. And as, the, uh, the, as things kind of wound down and to the point, you know, if you know the story, uh, there was a constitutional amendment that was going to uh, possibly make it impossible for same-sex cu uh, couples to ever get married in Minnesota. That was put out there, the voters defeated it, and then the legislature the next year passed a law that uh, made it legal. When that last bit was happening, I looked at this arc of the story that had happened and said, this is a really great story. And it we're, is. We were sitting in a in a, uh, an editorial meeting one morning. I said, you know, someone should make a movie about this. And they all looked at me and said- Why not us? Well, they said, okay, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> you go ahead. And uh, it, it, it 
you know, we got it done after that, but uh, it found, I found out a lot about movie making. I'd never made a movie before. Uh, I had done well, some, this is a great uh, uh, first movie. Yeah, that's what, that's what I, I, I think it's pretty good too. But yeah. you know, I'm biased as all get out. Uh, but I, I mean, I didn't know, I mean, I had a good idea how it was gonna fit together and, and what it was gonna be, but you know, the reason I made it is that it, it just is a great story. It needed, it needed somehow to be preserved and told and uh, we, we ended up some great interviews to do it. Well, what goes into making a documentary like this? Oh, well, the first thing is money. And <laughs> it's the first, first thing for everything, isn't of it? Course. It's money. And I had a great idea, but we're a very small news organization. We had no bu budget for this. So I, I, some, a friend of mine had recently done a film in Wisconsin called Wisconsin Rising that we'd actually helped her shoot. This was about the, uh, the battle in Wisconsin when Governor uh, Walker had decided that he was going to crush the unions. Yep. And hundreds of thousands of people showed up in Madison and we were there to, to shoot it. Well, we gave her the footage and she made a documentary out of it. And she made the documentary by raising money on something that was called Kickstarter. Nobody had- Kickstarter, no, yeah. No, nobody had, but at that point it was a brand new thing. And she, I said, how did you do it? And she said, well, you know, you just start asking people for money and you, have a, you make a good case for what you're trying to do. So we went and raised the money on Kickstarter and we raised $25,000, which we thought was a great amount of money until I looked at what it costs to do a movie. And you can spend $25,000 in a day, uh, even, on a, <laughs> even on a documentary shoot. Um, but we, we had a lot of people who actually contributed their resources. We had some people who were, you know, obviously who had shot during, while well, this whole thing had happened and they gave us their video. We had, uh, for interviews we were doing, we had Blue Moon Productions who were willing to work with us for a very low rate, below their normal rate, to help us pull this off because they believed in the project. And we were lucky enough that the uh, Minnesota, Til Minnesota Film and TV Board uh, had a fund that basically would match what our budget was to help us finish the movie. And so we ended up with a, a big budget of $50,000, <laughs> which is about the catering budget for one day on some movies. Yes. And we were, we were able to, uh, with a lot of hard work from a lot of people and volunteers, able to, to pull it off that way. So you learned a lot from making this documentary. I, I learned a lot about finance that I didn't intend to learn, but I also learned a lot about uh, the people who were involved. And that's what really makes this thing work, is the, the people that we talk to, all the stories that are in this thing, because yeah. you, you know the story. I mean, I, I explained the story. It's, like, it's sort of like a spoiler. If you know how it's gonna go, you say, why go? But you go because of the, the personal journey that people went on in this uh, movie. They, it, a lot of the folks that we talked to, and we, we talked to the activists, learned a lot about themselves by working on this. And this, that revelation comes through in the movie, and it's really, really kind of neat. They had to articulate why uh, they want this freedom to marry. Well, they had, here's the thing. This, this is the real interesting thing uh, that, got, that really wanted, made me want to do this after I did some initial kind of research into how the campaign worked, is it wasn't, it, for the longest time, gay rights activists had been promoting same-sex marriage as that, a right. This is a right, we have a right to do this. Uh -huh. And the rest of the population didn't get too excited about that because, mm -hmm. hey, here's another group asking for a right. And then there's, there's all the other things that go with it, you know, in terms of religion and other things that people sometimes attach to that. And they, so it wasn't, that was not winning people over, at least in their, in their hearts, where it counts. But they changed that and said, okay, let's talk about this as love. Because you, I mean, you have a spouse and mm -hmm. you, you know, what would you do if you couldn't marry your spouse and love, you know, love your spouse and live with your spouse? And, and that gets inside people's psyche and they start thinking about that. And no matter where you are in the political spectrum, that somehow speaks to you. And they had a lot more luck with this, working within people's value systems to talk to them about how something happens, instead of pounding away with the negative ads that you see in every you know, campaign out there. So-and-so is bad and you've gotta, you've gotta vote against them. 
they gave them, they gave people a reason, something to vote for instead of just against. Vote for the f uh, being able to love vote, whom you love. Vote for the freedom to marry. Vote yeah. for love. That's what this was all about. And it's a lesson that unfortunately got lost in the very next election uh, because I think <laughs> the next election turned out to be very, very negative as well. But I think if people go and take a look at this, there is something that can be extrapolated into how you should be doing politics to win. So lessons and tactics, lessons and uh, tactics. from this campaign that we can carry over into other political campaigns. Well, you hear, that's, that's the hard part because um, the lesson is that you need to talk within somebody's values. We just, you know, we just covered that. And that's, and that's great, but that doesn't always translate into candidates because it's more about the person. This mm -hmm. is, but this is something that I think can have some bearing on that, but it definitely has bearings on issues. Now, yep. there's, a, there's a psychiatrist that we, uh, uh, excuse me, a psychologist um, that we talked to who's in the movie, who helped uh, the, the marriage equality folks put together their plan. And it's her, her way of doing things. It was called Have a Conversation, because which, as you see in the movie, as you saw in the trailer, people spend a lot of time calling and talking to people, not just once, but two or three or more times about their own experiences. And not only calling on the phone, but sometimes meeting in person. Like exactly, that. exactly. And uh, her name is Phyllis Watts. And uh, when I was putting together the movie, uh, it took a while first to talk her into doing this because she was afraid that she was going to give the bad guys the information, you know, and that they were going to be able to use it. And I made the, I did the unusual thing as a journalist. I told her, look, I'll interview you. She was in California. I'll come out and interview you. And if there's anything you say you don't want used, I'll take it out. I won't use it. And she mm -hmm. said, we agreed on that. And I, afterwards, I, I gave her a transcript of what she said. I said, is there anything I can't use? She said, we well, can't use the name of my clients. And I said, well, that's fine. I mean, that's okay. Of course. But she did take, uh, when we finished, we finished the movie and she got to see it, uh, she said, can I take this too? She wanted to go to uh, Planned Parenthood in Wisconsin. And she took this over to them and said, this is what I can do for you. And I believe she is now doing, working with them. So it's those type of issues that, can, that this type of approach can absolutely help. Mm -hmm. But I think it can also help candidates if they just kind of keep in mind that when they talk to the other side, they're talking to them in their values. I mean, and when mm -hmm. you get outside of their values, that's when we get into calling people deplorables or something like that. <laughs> that's where things start falling apart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this might be important to Planned Parenthood across the country right now. It, it very well may be because obviously P Planned Parenthood is under attack in terms of its funding and you know whatever might happen with that. They, are, they may have to, uh, I mean, they get funding from other places than the government, but they may need to rally people around them yeah. and explain their story better. Well, they're, they're providing the medical care for so many women and, and so men as well uh, mm -hmm. that very important to them at this stage of life. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And, <coughs> But that message gets drowned out by the negative, and that's and that's what happened so many times with the uh, the marriage equality vote. Really, because there was 30 states before Minnesota where they had a similar vote, and 30 times they had lost, even though the people who are working, let's call them the good guys, the the people who are working for marriage equality, had more money and more volunteers, they lost every time, and the reason was is that the other side put fear into people. And they did that by saying, hey, your kids are going to be taught about gay marriage. And <laughs> that's what this campaign was about, was trying to preempt that, to talk about good things first, so that people, even though they heard those messages, they thought about them differently. And they thought there was some doubt in their mind. And they, you know, and when you, ent when you, I mean, the cigarette manufacturers knew this too. When you enter doubt into someone's mind, you start winning. I mean, the cigarette manufacturers entered doubt into people's mind about, you know, uh, the veracity, the danger, of da danger of tobacco smoke. That worked for them for the longest time. The facts eventually won out. Uh, and I'm not comparing the two here, but the tactic is the same. Mm -hmm. The tactic is the same. If you can introduce doubt into something, you have a better chance of at least winning with people than you do if you just uh, yell. That's right. 
better to say, do you understand why we love? Exactly. Rather than we demand our rights. <laughs> it's not why we love. It's what, do you understand? Do you understand why you love? Well, if you do, you understand exactly why we do. That's, uh -huh. that's, yes. see, that's, that's the key, is working that's within somebody's values. So how can people see the documentary if well, they've missed it so far? Well, it's a, it's a little bit tough. It showed at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Film Festival last year. It won mm. the Audience Choice Award. Yes. Uh, a lot of people saw it then, and we've shown it a few times since, and we'll probably show it a few times more. I'm working on trying to do a, a distribution deal so it can be seen online. But the best way to kind of keep track of that is uh, go to our website, which is howloveone.com. Howloveone.com. And that's one, like W-O-N, howloveone.com. And there you can sign up on our email, and we tell people when it's going to be showing next, as well as the festivals that it might be showing up in, and mm -hmm. when it might be released on DVD. And you get their area, their zip code, so that you can send them the one. Well, in we just tell area. everybody. You know, you might get a, a note saying, "Hey, it's shown in Arkansas," <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you don't, you know, put us in your spam filter because of that. We yeah. don't. We don't send out very many emails. Believe Good. me. So they can see the documentary by going to the website. Well, they, they, can, they can find out when it can be seen. It, it's not showing at the website uh, yet. Yes, yeah. correction, thank you. Uh, but some people want to support this work. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how can they support it? Just send a check? Well, it's, well that's, that's a simple answer. It's the, the parent organization for this was the uptake.org. And um, we, we create stories like this because people support us. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're involved in covering politics, we're involved in covering issues. So you can, you can support the uptake.org, which is a nonprofit. Uh, so it's a tax deductible donation. Yeah. And you just go to the uptake.org, there's a donate button there, and uh, that supports projects like this. Is there a w way to indicate you wanted to support how long? Well, you, you, could, you could put, I want to support the movie on there. Um, yeah. But we're, and, and, and you know, we're still, we still need money to try to get the movie pushed out there yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'd sure like to see it shown internationally, uh, being available to a lot more people. And it, that is, I'm learning a lot about movie distribution too. Because oh, good. It's, it's not, it keeps changing because the internet's changed it. It used to be you had to wait around for some Hollywood producer to green light your project and then it would be distributed in theaters. Now there's so many ways of getting it out. Yeah. But it's still streaming you, video. Streaming video. And I could, I could put it on a service tomorrow like Vimeo and ask people to pay a little bit. But the trouble is it probably wouldn't be successful or seen. So we're trying mm -hmm. to work with a, a company that can get it seen and still. We're still trying to recoup paying for the, the cost of, of the, the production. So, because yeah. we spent more than the $50,000 budget, unfortunately. <laughs> now, we have uh, less than 10 minutes left. What are you going to do next? Well, right now, uh, I am very focused on uh, our coverage of the, leg of the legislature and politics and uh, this up, you know, as unfortunately, we just got done with an election. We've got another election coming up. We already have debates that are going on. Yes. Uh, or at least candidates who are declaring there will be debates. There's fights, you know, there's all, all sorts of issues that are being fought between the legislature and the governor. We're spending our resources covering that because it's, we, it's important to have transparency in those things. Yeah. Uh, the uptake live streams video of the legislature when it's meeting, and right now it's not meeting. It may not for a while, if, uh, depending on what happens. But a lot is going on behind the scenes. It's behind the scenes. So we, we stream more video of when the legislature meets than any other media organization in the entire state. But we also cover the debates between the candidates. We do those live. Uh, we, uh, we, we interview the candidates. We do candidate profiles. We do issue profiles. We cover the protests that are in the streets as well. Mm -hmm. um, either live or on, on, a lot of it is video. A lot of it is video because we feel like that's... You record it uh, live and yeah. edit it. Yeah, we feel that's the most truthful medium that's out there. Yeah. I mean, people can manipulate it, but we try to put up our raw tape as well so people can't say, oh, you cut out this. You know, you're, you're trying to shade it. We try to show people everything that's happening. So mm -hmm. that takes a lot of my time, and that's 
I do that, and I also do a, I also do a daily radio show uh, to update people on what's yeah, going on. Tell us about that. How well, can they tune in? Is that uh, streaming audio? It is, it is streaming audio, but it is also on a real AM radio station. You've heard of those things. They still, oh, those. Those, yeah, they still have those, you know. I hear it's something like 950. Uh, AM 950 is uh, where you can listen to the show. It's, uh, we, if you are within the service area. If you're within the service area, and it's not the strongest signal, so if you can't hear it, you go online and at am950radio.com. am950.com. am950radio.com. Radio. Yeah, they had, to, they had to get that in there. So you can listen there, or you can get in on a podcast. You just look up uh, AM950 or Mike McEntee uh, in, the, in you know, iTunes, and it will pop up, and you can listen you know, uh, oh, good. later on. So, so there are all kinds of ways to always, hear your radio. Always. But we do it live between 4 and 5 o'clock, Monday through Friday, and it's uh, always an interesting mishmash of... Uh, what, what do you talk about? Well... I, I mean, a lot, of a, lot, a lot of things that we just, we just mentioned. Today, I, uh, I, I did an interview with uh, one of the candidates who's declared in the 3rd Congressional District running on the DFL side, and we got her view of what she thinks the issue is and wh why she's running. It was a pretty interesting story because she was uh, an organizer of the Women's March. That she got 100,000 people to show up. And Good she said, for her. She said, well, this is what politics is about. I guess I'm going to get involved in politics big time. So she's yeah. running for Congress. So there's that, but we also talk to uh, people who are fighting what the police have been doing in mm -hmm. the Twin Cities, and that's asking people their immigration status when we have ordinance that says that they're not supposed to because that develops fear between the immigrant community and the police. Yes. And so uh, uh, that group is fighting that and trying to change some things. So we'll get into issues like that, and then we'll, we'll, have, we'll play sound bites of what's happening in Washington, and we don't play the... 10 seconds or 15 seconds that you'll hear on the network news or the evening news, we'll play about three or four minutes of what happened so you get a real feel of it, what was yeah. going on. You yeah. Know? So yeah. we're not, we're not, exp we believe that our listeners are smart enough and are patient enough to listen to something like that as opposed to, well, you only want the sizzle. You only want the, somebody uh -huh. calling each other a name. We, we want more than the sizzle. We want to see how, why it's cooking. <laughs> we want to see, we want to get to the wonky stuff. We, yeah. we think there's some great people who want it. So we, we focus on that. And it's not, and it's more storytelling than name calling. That's what, and it's, which is kind of what I learned from doing the documentary. That's the way you need to approach politics. Let's tell stories, let's be, let's be truthful, and let's try to frame things within people's values so they understand what's going on. Great idea. Yeah. You should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> when I have time, I might. Good, good. Now, um, we, I look back on the experience that the state of New York had uh, when they were attaining marriage equality. It, it took a long time. Right. And a lot of hassle. Uh, can, can you compare it with Minnesota experience? Well, I think the biggest difference, and I think uh, they, they passed their marriage law in like 2011, and uh, Minnesota didn't get to deal with this until like 2012. But the big difference was that, um, and in fact, I think they passed it, Minnesota passed it in 2013. The big difference was, is there were people there all the time in the legislature trying to get marriage equality passed. And so it was, that was how the battle was going. Here in Minnesota, Republicans took control of the legislature in 2010, you know, as they, they had that big sweeping election. And they decided they were going to try to put a constitutional amendment through and prevent it from ever happening in Minnesota. And the, that's, that's the big difference. Minnesota had two big battles over it. New York had one continuous battle. And it was harder to cr convince the majority of the legislators than it was to convince the, uh, uh, the people, the voters of Minnesota. Well, I would say well, I, I would say it's, it's, it was actually the opposite. I think it's oh. because, remember, if you, it's, you and I can have a conversation. I might be able to convince you in a certain amount of time. But if you're going to try to convince a bunch of people of something, literally a million or more people or something, yeah. that's, a, that's a harder task. I mean, you're taking it and blowing it up by a million times. So in that sense, it was a little bit harder, I think. Yeah. You're, yeah, <laughs> it was harder here, it and was we hard. succeeded. And we succeeded. We were the first state 
to, uh, to turn back that marriage and amendment. How many others had turned it down? Uh, well, 30 had, had passed it. 30 states had passed this before the, we got to Minnesota. The, the uh, constitutional amendment? The constitutional amendment. amendment, or its equivalent, yes, they had. That, that marriage is only between, between a, a man and a woman, right. Yeah. But we rejected it and had then the, what do you call it, the momentum? Right, it, kind of, it kind of boomeranged on the, you know, the reason, the reason the Republicans had put this on the ballot is they wanted to gin up their base and have them show up for the next election. And it, it backfired totally because it ginned up the other side's base and they showed up for the election as well. Well, this has been really valuable to hear about the film and now I, I want to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> to, to consider how does this apply to other issues as well? Yeah, it, I think it definitely does, but again, it, you, it takes a little bit of thought, I think. It issues it works, well, yeah. candidates, it takes a lot more, of thought. It takes a lot of thought. <laughs> you gotta have the right candidate. No matter what you come down to, you gotta have the right candidate to win an election. Yeah. Well, are you gonna be a candidate someday? No, I'm a candidate for having a great dinner <laughs> <laughs> and, and trying to get a nap in. I, I'm not running for anything. <laughs> okay. Well, th this has been so good, uh, Mike, to learn from your perspective uh, as the director and producer of that film. Uh, we, we learned a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate the invitation to come in.